So I want to share with you guys this. This is the point. Traditionally, recruiting has been good when the economy is struggling and young Americans have difficulty entering the civilian workforce. But reports from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and other government agencies show that inflation is easing. The labor market is strong and unemployment was below 4% for all of 2023. Let me say this. For many of us, the economy is still terrible. We're just not going to take a job where we could die in order to have uh, free health care, housing, and education. We're not going to lay our lives on that altar for the corporations. You see, it's a mix of things because while many of us probably could get into the military and do okay, we don't want to take that risk. We're not going to take that risk because ultimately we realize who the military actually serves. Now, this is not me saying anything against anybody who has served in the military or anybody who's currently serving in the military. But there is a truth that you have to come to terms with. I didn't know how I was going to start this segment. But this type of information makes me fearful for my nephews. In 11 days, I'll be 40. So I'm aged out. So I'm not worried about myself. I'm not worried about my boyfriend because he's aged out as well. But if you are a male between the ages of 18 and 26, you need to pay attention. Come in. Come in. Come to the screen. Pay attention right now. Do you hear me? All right. So this sack of demented disease yogurt wants to be your boss. Yes. He wants to be your boss. Do you want him to be your boss? I didn't think so. So the problem is, is, is potentially can happen because there was a new bill that was signed by the guy on the left. And uh, if I were between 18 and 26 out and able-bodied, I wouldn't be too happy about it. So there was a recent uh, bill that was signed. It was really the defense bill, the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, signed by uh, President Joe Biden. And it also had a piece in it that I think is pretty uh, concerning. Um, and so, yes, I want to talk about it. Um, one of the first people who, uh, spoke about it, uh, I think it was Michael Tracy. Let me share here. Here we go. So this is the law that Michael Tracy was referring to. Uh, Michael Tracy says, wow, for the first time since 1972, the NDAA bill passed today by the House who would automatically register all males ages 18 to 26 for selective service in the military. For the past 52 years, males were required to register on their own, but compliance had reportedly been lagging. 
Now, a lot of people are like, well, what is selective service? Well, selective service really just gives the government a count of all males ages 18 to 26, just in case they want to bring back the draft. Now, I do remember having to register for selective service. Now, raised in the religion I was in, in the organization I was in, we were told that you, of course, have to, you know, obey uh, the respective authorities because they were placed there by God and yada, yada, yada. So therefore, unless it does something that goes against God's law, then you have to respect, you know, and go by the law. So by the law, meaning between the ages of 18 and 26, you had to sign up for a United States Selective Service. So me and my brother had to go to the post office and then sign that card and then give it to the people behind the desk. And then they sent it in and you were registered under United States Selective Service. Well, this was always a voluntary action. Even though you had to do it, it had to be done. You had to do it yourself, right? But now it's automatic. So it's subtitle D, recruitment, section 531, selective service system, automatic registration. It says automatic registration. The Military Selective Service Act is amended by striking section three and inserting the following new section three. It says, except as otherwise provided in this title, every male citizen of the United States and every other male person residing in the United States between the ages of 18 and 26 shall be automatically registered under this act by the director of the selective service system. It says this system shall not apply to any alien lawfully admitted to the United States as a non-immigrant under Section 101A.15 of the Immigration and Nationality Act for so long as he continues to maintain a lawful non-immigrant status in the United States. So, they're making it automatic. And so, you really don't have much of a choice. Uh, somebody actually gave an explanation, a more detailed nuanced explanation as to you uh the selective service so i want to go over that all right so i'm gonna refresh and then because you can't oh yes you can nice how would the selective service system work if it was reinstated it's important to note that the last selective service draft was in 1972, and it's not an active practice, but if the president and Congress were to reinstate it, here's how it would work. The first then drafted would be those turning 20 during the calendar year of the lottery. For example, if a draft were held in 2024, men born in 2004 would be considered first, men turning 21 would be second priority, and so on until a man turns 26. The process begins with two lottery machines. The first contains balls that are labeled 1 through 365 or 366 for leap year. The other has a ball for each possible month and day combination for the calendar year. In the presence of observers, media, and officials, one ball is drawn from each machine and the two make a pair. If, for example, the day May 15th was drawn alongside the number 48, then those men turning 20 on May 15th would be ordered for induction processing only after men whose birthdays drew sequence numbers 1 through 47. The drawings continue until every birthday has a sequence number. And that is how it works. So that is selective service. So if they were to implement the draft, you basically get your name pulled out of a hat and then you will be chosen for a military service. And if you didn't want to do military service, you go to prison. That's basically how it works. Don't believe me? Just ask Muhammad Ali. So that is what is going on. And why are they doing this? Why make this automatic? Well, remember, it said that the registration was down. Why is the registration down? I want to get into that, too because I think it's really, really important. Let's go here. So 
This is out of military.com. So this is why they want to do it, because they're scared. Because the military recruiting outlook is grim indeed. Loss of public confidence, political tax, and the economy are all taking a toll. It says military, let's say recruiting patterns in the military have increasingly come to reflect the nation's red state, blue state political divide, with recruiting strong in the South and Midwest, but lagging on the coasts. That's from uh, retired Army Brigadier General Michael Meese said at Rand Corp. When you look at it regionally, the North and West tend to be less positive on military service than the South and Midwest. So it says the implications. Are you serious? Ah, this was free. Hang on, guys. They're trying to make me pay. JB don't like that. Uh, sometimes you got to reroute. All right. Says so the implication, let me see, when you look at, let me say, the implications of that recruiting are problematic because where are you going to go to fish to fill out the ranks? Says the pattern has been in place for decades and should continue, me said, it should envision time 50 years from now when the recruits from New York and Oregon would number in the single digits and everybody else is gonna be from Georgia and North Carolina despite the ongoing efforts of the service to services to attract recruits nationwide. Um, so, says the report found out that Americans still think highly of veterans, but a majority, 54%, would recommend against joining the military, particularly in the enlisted ranks. However, nearly two thirds of those surveyed said that they would tell a 17 year old to join as an officer, either through the Reserve Officers Training Corps, known as the ROTC, or military academies. Although public still holds military generally in high esteem compared to other major institutions, that esteem is wavering, influenced by such factors as the end of the war in Afghanistan, the increased polarization of the public, and heightened politicization of the military. Because the RAND report found that several other surveys and studies last year that also showed a decline in the trust and confidence the public gives the military resulting in another year of missed recruiting goals. In November, the annual defense survey by the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute found that only a slim majority, 51% of Americans, would recommend that family and friends join the military, while 33% would discourage military service. This is why they are doing this because they may end up having to bring back the draft because ultimately uh, they do not have the people to, they don't have the young bodies to die on the altar of capitalism like they had before. They need cannon fodder in order to expand the empire. But if you don't have the bodies to do it, well, then you got to force them. Kind of like what Ukraine is doing right now. The United States wants to do the same. Force you into military service. It feels like a setup to that. Am I wrong for thinking that? Am I crazy? But it feels like a setup to that. Anywho, let's continue. Says the 51% figure was a significant decline from the results of the 2018 Reagan Foundation survey when 70% said they would recommend joining the military. About half the respondents to the foundation survey attributed the decline to so called woke practices undermining military effectiveness and unit cohesion. In July, a Gallup poll showed that only 60% of the public expressed a great deal or quite a lot of confidence in the military the lowest mark since the poll since 1997. Rep 
Republicans have been the most likely to express confidence in the military, and it remains so today, but the rate has declined by over 20 percentage points in three years from 91% to 68%. Well, why would that be? You got to remember, I'll be 40 in less than two weeks. The Twin Towers came down in my senior year of high school. The Iraq War started when I was 19. So, needless to say, a lot of my generation saw war and we saw that it was based on a lie. And so we're seeing what's going on in Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia, um, Pakistan, and many other countries. And we're realizing that if that was based on a lie and we're being told that is now based on oil, well, we don't want to go. And we're realizing that this is all based on the corporate parasites using our government and our military in order to force these countries into handing over their resources to them. Government is like a hammer. Who wields that hammer is the problem. The corporations are wielding that hammer. They're wielding the military for their own personal gain. And that's what we see today. They want to use your sons, and I say sons specifically, I say male specifically, because that's what the that's what the Bill says, in order, essentially, for the benefit of corporations. And now they want to automatically register them just in case they bring back the draft. There's more to it as to why the military recruitment is down. Since in July, a Gallup poll showed that only 60% of the public expressed a great deal or quite a lot of confidence in the military. I just read that. Says the military also has to contend with drawing recruits from a stressed out society. According to the latest Stress in America survey conducted by the Harris Poll for the American Psychological Association and released in November, the pandemic, global conflicts, Racism and racial injustice, inflation and climate related disasters are all weighing on the collective consciousness of Americans. Here, as you can see, capitalism is hanging itself by the rope it sold us with, to, with. Because of the greed causing all this stuff, the greed of capitalism causing the Global conflicts, racism, racial injustice, inflation, climate-related disasters, this is all causing us to have a burnout, a stress. We don't want to deal with this. That's how it operates. Capitalism caused it, and now capitalism is going to meet its demise by its own hand. So as few of the respondents to the survey reported confidence about the direction of our country is going, 34%. Or they said they feel that their government representatives have their best interests at, in mind, 31%. The growing doubts about military service coupled with other factors ranging from, one, low unemployment to the prevalence of youth obesity and the closing of high schools to recruiters during the pandemic, have all contributed to fewer and fewer young Americans signing up for the military. Hang on, let me say this, let me say this one thing. What does the military use to recruit young people? Well, they use 
free education, housing, and healthcare. Right? Something that every single person in this country really should have as a human right, but yet they use it as a recruitment tool. But it's no longer working. And that's why they're scared. It's no longer work. They can't dangle the carrot in front of you anymore. They can't go, hey, 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 kid, you, you want you want a house, you know, for either low cost or free? You want health care for free or, or nearly free? Hey, hey, you want an education without having to go into debt? Come on in. Fight and lay your life on the line. The U.S. military. Guess what? We ain't falling for it. The kids ain't falling for it no more. They're like, nah, we ain't doing that. Instead of going into the military, now they're getting jobs in the private sector. They're working at Lowe's. They're working at Starbucks. They're working at Walmart. They're working for all these different companies. And guess what? Now, the unemployment rate is low. Now, a lot of people still ain't got no jobs, but they rather be unemployed than lay their life out on the line for these corporations because they know they peak game. They know what's what. They know what it's about. Also, it says youth obesity. Well, that's capitalism eating itself, baby. Because who pushed the salt, fat, and sugar so that we would eat more, so that we would consume more of their products. These corporations, these same corporations that want us to go abroad to fight for them so that they can put their corporations in these countries and extract their resources, these same corporations are the ones that push the salt, fat, and sugar and processed foods on us. But now, and saying this as a larger person myself, we're too fat to fight. We're too fat to fight. And whose fault is it? It's the person that made us fat. See how capitalism works? It sells you the rope it's going to hang itself with. But it does. And then it says the closing of high schools to recruiters during the pandemic. Well, the pandemic probably wouldn't have lasted as long if we actually did what was needed and then paid people to stay home and made the lot. And if we did a lockdown, it was short, a short lockdown so that we could stem the, you know, ride this wave and make out better. But they didn't do that because they were greedy. So, yeah. All right. It says in fiscal 2023, only the Marine Corps and Space Force, <laughs> Space Force, among the five service branches met their recruiting goals. The Army fell short by 10,000 of its goal, bringing on 65,000 active duty enlisted soldiers. The Air Force recruited only 24,100 of the 26,877 it wanted. And the Navy recruited 30,236 active duty enlisted sailors, well short of its goal of 37,000. The shortfall understates the challenge before us as the services lowered their end strength goals in recent years, in part because of the difficult recruiting environment. So that's the Pentagon's undersecretary, Ashish uh, Vazirani for personal readiness. So it says the result is that the all volunteer force faces one of its greatest challenges since its inception in 1973 when President Richard Nixon ended the draft and the demographics argue against a quick turnaround. He testified that fewer and fewer young Americans have a parent who served in the military, which greatly decreases the propensity to serve. 
Quote, in 1995, 40% of young people had a parent who served in the military, but by 2022, just 12% had a parent who had served. So this is true. My grandfather uh, was a Korea War vet, and my uncle also was a military veteran. As far as that's concerned, as far as I know, nobody in my family who is who is younger than my uncle, who would today, if he was still alive, be in his 60s, it has not served in the military. Neither me nor my cousins have served in the military. None of my nieces, nephews, or second or third cousins have served in the military. That's a lot of kids. That's a lot of people. Guess what? Most people in my family have not served in the military and it's dwindling. Says this has led to a disconnect between the military and large share of society. So this talks about how they tried to use top, the Top Gun movie as a military recruitment tool, which was a bunch of bullcrap because it was only nostalgic for those of us who are Gen X and Gen and uh, Gen Y, aka millennials, because most of us, like I've never even seen Top Gun. I'm a millennial, yeah, but I've never even watched it. And so they're trying to recruit. So I want to share with you guys this. This is the point. Traditionally, recruiting has been good when the economy is struggling and young Americans have difficulty entering the civilian workforce. But reports from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and other government agencies show that inflation is easing. The labor market is strong and unemployment was below 4% for all of 2023. Let me say this. For many of us, the economy is still terrible. We're just not going to take a job where we could die in order to have uh, free health care, housing, and education. We're not going to lay our lives on that altar for the corporations. You see, it's a mix of things because while many of us probably could get into the military and do okay, we don't want to take that risk. We're not going to take that risk because ultimately we realize who the military actually serves. Now, this is not me saying anything against anybody who has served in the military or anybody who's currently serving in the military. But there is a truth that you have to come to terms with. You're not protecting the American people. You're protecting corporate interests. That's your job. You're a employee of the corporations. You're not actually protecting us. You're protecting oil fields. You're protecting poppy fields. You're really not doing much for the American people. Because ultimately, like, who are our enemies that are really trying to get at us? And you can say, well, these terrorists in the Middle East, they're trying to come after us. Not really, because ultimately, the only thing they really want is for us to get out. The biggest protection you can do for us here on the homeland is to get out of the Middle East. Get out of their land and stop trying to put in a puppet that oversees them to keep the resources in corporate hands. That's basically it. If you're serving in the military, you were lied to. I'm sorry, you were lied to. You were lied to by our government, 
you were lied to by the military branches. Because the people who are actually being protected really are the, the stock prices of Raytheon, Northrop General Dynamics, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin. You're protecting their portfolio. And it sucks because they want you to think that you're you know, you're living a, a greater purpose, but they're lying to you. And Gen Z and the upcoming Gen Alpha, they realize this already before so that they don't have to enlist. But now what the corporations are doing is they're pushing the politicians to force your sons and nephews and grandsons and siblings to fight for them, whether they like it or not, or they at least want to keep the apparatus in place so that it's automatic, so that when they do decide to actually force them via conscription, then they have no choice but to fight or go to prison. Ultimately, that's the reality of the situation. Your government's held hostage by the corporate powers, by the parasite class. You don't think that doesn't affect their military? They're saying that, yeah, wokeness is part of the issue, but mm, that's really just the, the whole wokeness thing is really just a recruitment tool. It's not actually they're trying to make it more welcoming to different marginalized groups. But what good is having somebody who's black or brown who is LGBTQ that's bombing brown people in another country? Like, is that really a sobering thought? Is that something that actually adds, just brings warmth to you? No, no. So the whole wokeness thing, that's that's a cop out. Just wanted to say that. And there's nothing woke about the US military, nothing. Uh, so yeah, that's some of the reasons why and they are, they're scrambling because they really want to bring as many young people, particularly young men into the military as possible. They want to at least have that door open for, for the draft. Who owed it for? Well, we have the roll call here is HR is bill number HR 2670. Uh, so this passed uh, four days ago. So if you want to go by Republican, uh, 147 Republicans voted for it and 163 Democrats voted for it. Uh, so it passed 310 to 118. Uh, let's go to the Democrats first. Oh, oh, I did not mean to. Okay. All right. So, uh, looking here, I'm just trying to look for names that I would recommend that I would recognize. Jamal Bowman voted against it. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Isn't that one of the Castro twins from Texas that... Hang on. I think that's one... Yeah, Joaquin Castro. Isn't he supposed to be this, this uh, liberal? He voted for it. Interesting. Joaquin Castro voted for it. 
Very, quite interesting. Of course, James Clyburn voted for it. Uh, Jasmine Crockett, you know, the lady that insulted Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, she voted for it. Henry Coilar also voted for it, right? Uh, let me see. Who else? Who else? Of course, Cindy Hoyer voted for it. Uh, Sheila Jackson Lee voted for it. Uh, Pramila Jayapal, she voted against it. Of course, Hakeem Jeffries, his uh, genocidal loving behind, done voted for it. Rokana voted against it, right? Let me see. Oh, of course, Ted Lou voted for it. Of course. Uh, let me see. Bob Menendez voted for it. Jerry Natler voted against it. Interesting. Okay. AOC voted against it. Ilhan Omar also voted against it. Uh, of course, Nancy Pelosi voted for it. Mark Pocan voted against it. Ayanna Presley voted against it. So it looks like the the squad pretty much voted against. Uh, Sometimes a broken clock is right twice a day. So yes, uh, let me see. I'm just trying to, Rashida Tlaib voted against it. I mean, I, I kind of expected Rashida Tlaib to vote against it, given her stance, especially what's going on in Gaza. Of course, Miss Washman Saltz, Voted for it, aka shrimp ramen noodles. Voted for it. So, and Frederica Wilson voted for it. Uh, so, yeah, that's out of the Democrat side. And of course, the Republican side, I'd be more interested in the Republican side who voted against it because Republicans seem to be more gun ho uh, for defense. So who voted against it? Uh, Baird, not for, not familiar with him. Uh, Bean, let me see. Actually, you know what? Let me, can I just, hang on. Yay, I can do that. Okay. Who, who a Republican that voted against it? Uh, let me see, Biggs, Bishop, Boost, Bean. Bridget, uh, Carter, Clow, Clyde Collins, Curtis Davidson, Donald, Duncan, Estes, uh, Fishbach, Fry. Matt Gates voted against it? Holy crap. Matt Gates voted against it. Interesting. What is Matt Gates outdoing some of these Democrats? when it comes to being anti-war. Why, how in the world, how in the world are you guys allowing yourself to be outdone by Mal Matt Gates again? Oh my Lord, pitiful, pitiful. This is why, Lord, these people, I'm telling you, let me see. Uh, Harris, Hearn, Higgins, Hunt, Jordan. Is that Jim Jordan voted against it? You guys are allowing these far right wingers to to outdo you 
And sometimes they'll vote against these things for the wrong reasons, but they'll do the right thing for the wrong reasons, but still, right? Of course, Thomas Massey voted against it. Let me see. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Well, it's funny how some people at the Freedom Caucus uh, will vote against it, and they're in solidarity with the squad. Interesting, right? But yes, so um, it's just interesting how uh, you know all this. You know, uh, it, it just they want to basically put our our young men in harm's way. And I honestly do think that when it comes to uh, this issue, I, I think that um, one thing I'm happy about is that our young people see through the BS. They see through what the corporations are trying to do. Uh, and I say corporations, not government, because the corporations are the, they're the, they're the man behind the curtain, right? And so that's why I talk about the corporations, but it's kind of funny because Cardi B actually said something about regarding this. And I thought it was funny, but I think I should share. Uh, yeah. Now, pardon is the, it's a little bit dark, but like the visually it's a little bit dark, but this is definitely Cardi B once you hear the voice. So let's go. So I just read an article saying that the house just passed a bill that they're going to automatically register men from 18 to 26 for war. Okay. And all I want to say is to America, good luck with that. These new little niggas are TikTokers, baby. These motherfuckers ain't gonna fight no war. We're gonna die. You're gonna die. You might as well just keep motherfucking uh investing money in your guns. Cause these these new kids, you wanna send these new kids to fight these wars? The TikTok fucking hip shakers? Out of your mind. This is a new America, baby. This ain't the 19 motherfucking. Now, like, seriously, you're going to draft these kids that be TikToking all day to fight them, what? Most likely, what, them Russians? Them motherfuckers that be fighting bears and shit? <laughs> that motherfucking climbing mountains to go to school and whatever? I got some news for you, motherfuckers. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> no, but for real, I mean, the thing is, is like these these young people, I, I mean, people talk about, oh, well, they're doing the TikTok dance. It's like, yeah, I'd rather do a TikTok dance than die on the battlefield for for for, for what? For for Nabisco. <laughs> I'd rather die. I'd rather I'd rather dance to TikTok than uh, die on the battlefield for for general dynamics. Or for Raytheon. Come on now. You're not going to, you, you know, I mean, it feels like these young people have their priorities in place. Now, somebody also uh, talked about this as well. I think this is going to be kind of interesting too. Oh. So they're basically stitching what Cardi B just said saying that the House just passed a bill that they're going to automatically register men from 18 to 26 for war, okay? And all I want to say is to America, good luck with that. <laughs> these new little niggas are TikTokers, baby. These motherfuckers ain't going to fight no war. We're going to die. You're going to die. I mean, she's not wrong. All right, she's a little wrong. It's not that these men are automatically going to war. It's that they were automatically registered for the draft, which means in the event of a draft, they have to go. But they're not gonna. To be real, America doesn't really do much to inspire loyalty in its civilians. 
Our government repeatedly shows that they don't have civilians' best interests at heart. The prison system, justice system, housing situation, taxes, higher education, health care. We're not a broke country. We have the resources to make sure that our citizens are healthy, educated, and safe. We have them. We choose to apply them elsewhere. It's a huge middle finger to American citizens. Gen Z's got no motivation to fight for a country that makes it so that they need to have two jobs and a roommate in order to, to live in basic housing. I think a bunch of fucking TikTokers are going to get up in arms and fight for a country that's banning TikTok. Now, back in my day, it was different. We got indoctrinated hell diver style. Now, everybody stand up. Put your hands on your heart. Hand on my heart. And pledge your undying allegiance to this nation. So we don't question shit as much as they do. We were told America is the greatest country in the world, and we just believed it. And it is if you've never been anywhere else. Wait, so y'all got health care and free college? Yes, bro. Our taxes cover it. And the police don't shoot you? Police? <laughs> Bro, don't nobody shoot nobody. It is never that deep. So, yeah, I think if a draft happens, it'll just be a bunch of Gen Z going to jail. Like, they'll just go to jail and get free housing and food for a while. It, either that or they'll injure themselves in a way that makes it so that they can't fight. Like, it'll be one of those. I don't think that Gen Z are just going to start going over and fighting for the country. I don't think that's what's going to happen. And I know I'm going to get people to talk about, how come it's just the men getting drafted? What happened to equality? I need y'all to understand that men are making that decision to not include women in the draft. Women make up less than a third of the House of Representatives. You want to complain about the inequality, complain about it to the people making things unequal. Because what you're complaining about is patriarchy. But those are my thoughts. You let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. So, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, is like, uh, look, I mean, what they trying to do? You know, I mean, th that's what they're trying to do, uh, ultimately. And so I think that if you are a young person between the ages of 18 and 26, I... I implore you to think about what you would do if they were to reintroduce the draft. If they said you have to fight these people abroad for the interests of corporations or go to prison, what would you be willing to do? Would you be willing to do what the IOF, what the IDF did in Gaza to all of those poor Black and brown people, because yes, there are black people in Gaza. Would you be willing to do to them a genocide with what essentially what the corporate dictators want you to do in our military? It's not above the realm of possibility. The reason why is because there is precedence. Think about all of the people murdered by the corporate dictators via the U.S. government. Who dropped two nukes on Japan? Who murdered hundreds of thousands of Koreans? The Vietnamese. What about what happened in uh, what happened in Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan? Like, it is not above the realm of possibility that you will also be committing genocides. Are you willing to do that for some housing, some health care? and no student loans. Are you willing to do that to other people? And if they try to force you to do it, are you willing to say no and go behind bars? The reality needs to set in.
And yes, I'm going to have to have a talk with my nephew about this. I don't want to see him go through this in any way, way, shape, or form. But question is, is what are you willing to lay your life down for? This is why I say, young men, you need to pay attention to exactly what's going on. And remember, foreign policy and domestic policy are directly linked. They're intertwined. And it literally, literally affects your very lives. And young women, and to all my beloved they thems, you may not be directly affected, but you will be indirectly affected as well. Make sure the young cisgendered men in your lives see this. So yeah, choices are gonna be made. Are you going to meet the moment? Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash JBFon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.